I'm a robot vacuum cleaner, so yeah, I got one gig. I suck up dirt, so pardon my inferiority complex about Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could they save their customers money on car insurance, but they got fast and friendly claim service, too. And an award-winning mobile app. Plus access to licensed agents 24-7. Who am I kidding? I can't even do corners. Uh-oh. Choking hazard. <gasps> Popcorn girdles. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. The Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you right here on ESPN Radio. 250 plus markets across the United States of America. And of course... ESPN Radio on Sirius XM. Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. Teddy Bruschi, NFL analyst extraordinaire, three-time Super Bowl champion with e- uh, with the New England Patriots. He will be on the show a little bit later on today. Talked about these AFC and AFC, NFC rather, conference championship matchups. And, of course, he'll be doing that about 30 minutes past hour number one. And then, of course, um, Our resident handicap extraordinaire out of Vegas, R.J. Bell, he'll be on the show with us to handicap the games Vegas styles. Looking forward to talking to him as well. It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. Lots of stuff to get into today. Um, And, of course, I will get into LeBron James and Charles Barkley, calling him a drama queen. I'll respond to that a little bit later on in the show, plus at a particular question that I'm interested in presenting to all of you uh, because I'm interested in hearing your take about that. But like I said, first things first, I mean, look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in a minority. I am in the minority because I am not caught up in this Tom Brady injury the way everybody else is. I really don't understand that. I'm actually laughing at all of y'all. I'm actually laughing at all of y'all. Let me get this straight. A five-time champion who's been to about nine AFC championship games, who's 60 minutes away from a Super Bowl appearance, yet another, who is widely recognized, universally recognized, actually, as one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, widely recognized as the greatest quarterback ever. I am supposed to believe that this guy named Tom Brady is hurt. And he's not practicing. And you know what? He might not be ready for Sunday. I mean, y'all make me laugh. I got to admit it. Y'all actually make me laugh. Tom Brady, this is all a hoax to me. This is all a hoax to me. I don't believe any of it. Not a second of it. And my producer, hey, Steven, hey, you know, I I hear what you're saying. I totally understand. But, however, you know, in in light of the news that has come out over the last 24 hours, I mean, do you really, really think you haven't moved from your position at all? That's a poor imitation of my producer, Jonathan Winthrop, but that's beside the point. The real point is this. No, I have not moved off my position. I think it's all a smokescreen. I think if there was anything serious, we wouldn't even know that he was injured. I think if it was anything serious, we would know that we've got a boatload of stuff to be worried about. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. I think there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Tom Brady will be fine. He will be there, ready to go, ready to handle his business. That is what I believe. Chris Hogan will be ready. Brandon Cooks will be ready. Rob Gronkowski will be ready. Danny Amendola will be ready. Deion Lewis will be ready. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I expect. If Tom Brady's going to have trouble, it's going to be because Jacksonville, which has 55 sacks this season, which was terrorizing one quarterback after another all season long, they don't need to send the house in order to get at Tom Brady. They can rush four and drop seven back into the secondary. They've got those kind of skills, that kind of athleticism, which says to me that Deion Lewis is going to need to run the ball relatively effectively. That's what he's going to need to do. Because if he does that, then you got to stack the line of scrimmage a little bit better. And if you do that, that opens up play action, which is going to give Tom Brady more time and more room to operate, which is when he'll be deadly. That is what I foresee. 
That is what needs to transpire. That is what needs to happen. And if it doesn't go down like that, because they can't run the football effectively, the Tom Brady's going to have a long day because you're going to need to drop back to pass more. You're not going to be able to lean on play action or any other kind of trickery. And as a result, they're going to be able to get at you. Because those are some rough riders on Jacksonville's defense. I am not trying to disrespect Jacksonville's defense by any stretch of the imagination. I really am not. I know they're big time. They're the number two ranked defense in the league. Jalen Ramsey is no joke. Calais Campbell is no joke. Malik Jackson is no joke. Telvin Smith returned a touchdown. You know, off of a fumble, a sack fumble by Big Ben Roethlisberger. Miles Jack had an interception against Roethlis- Roethlisberger last week. Barry Church is a former Cowboy. And I'm still sitting here praising him. That's how big time the Jacksonville Jaguars defense is. Barry Church, a former Cowboy, is on this roster. And I'm not accusing him of contamination. That's how big time Jacksonville's defense is. So I got news for you. Make no mistake about it. Big things are on the way. Jacksonville's defense is going to be here for a little while. But am I supposed to believe that Blake Borders is going to beat Tom Brady? I don't believe it. Because I don't believe the Patriots are going to let Leonard Fournette beat him. I know he's going to penetrate the line of scrimmage. It's going to come down to McCourty and Chang and those boys and whether or not they can tackle. Chung, rather. I understand. I get it. But I believe they'll get, they'll pull it off, and I believe the New England Patriots are going to do everything necessary and everything within their power to ensure that Blake Bortles is going to have to be the one who beats them if they're going to miss out on getting to the Super Bowl. In Foxborough, no less. I believe that's what's going to happen. And I don't believe it will. And by the way, A.J. Bouye, I mean, listen, he's going to have a better week this week because he ain't going against Antonio Brown. Because we know what we saw what Antonio Brown did to him last week. Brandon Cooks ain't no Antonio Brown. 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. That's one game. The other game is at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia where the Philadelphia Eagles are hosting the Minnesota Vikings for the chance to go to the Super Bowl. Eagles are fourth in points allowed, fourth in yards allowed, number one against the rush, relatively suspect against the pass. But their defense is elite in and of itself, just like Minnesota's is, even though Minnesota was number one. So this is going to be some ugly defensive battle. That's what I'm anticipating. Some ugly defensive battle. That's what I'm anticipating. But I got to tell you something. I really, really got to say this. I think Minnesota is so lucky. It's so lucky. I don't see them winning this game. I think Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles are going to find a way to pull this out. I think it'll be a nail biter. I can see the Eagles winning this game like 21 to 20. I think it's going to be that close, but I think the Philadelphia Eagles will prevail because of their defense, because of the home crowd, and because I think their defense will make a play against Minnesota's offense and Case Keenum, which everybody's trying to act like is the second coming of Joe Montana, and I think that they'll find a way, that meaning the Eagles, to get it done. That is what I believe. I ain't going to lie to you, though. I ain't that damn confident about it. 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. We'll get into both AFC and NFC championship games. We'll get into both topics, both games. We also need to recognize this before we say anything else. If ever there was a moment when Tom Brady is holding the NFL in the palm of his hands, it is right now. Ladies and gentlemen, last week, Big Ben Roethlisberger, Matt Ryan and Drew Brees all went down. Their replacements are Blake Bortles, Nick Foles, and Case Keenum. If you think for one second, after the year that the NFL had, because of Colin Kaepernick's protest and ultimately the president getting involved by turning it into an issue about our American flag, all to ex- all to irritate and annoy NFL owners who would not let him into their little boys club or their big boys club. As an NFL owner, that's right, I said it, that's what your president did. He had a vendetta against other owners, which they confirmed and acknowledged. 
that they believed because that issue was successfully hijacked and because fan interest and ratings interest all dissipated. You have any idea how bad this would be for the National Football League if we had a Super Bowl that was without Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Ben Roethlisberger, and Tom Brady? And instead, we had Blake Bortles versus Nick Foles or Case Keenum. You talk about ratings nosediving. Oh, my Lord. I don't recall at any time when the NFL ever needed a player more than they need Tom Brady this weekend. And much and to annoy my buddy Carlton, who calls in, it wouldn't surprise me at all if everything was done to facilitate Brady advancing to the Super Bowl within legal means, of course. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Craving even more of Stephen A? Him of all people! For around-the-clock access to the man? I'm Stephen A! You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram at Stephen A. Smith and on Facebook at Stephen A. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here on ESPN Radio. By the way, that diatribe I went on a little bit earlier was Straight Talk Wireless, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. The number to call into the Stephen A. Smith Show. As always, is 888-729-3776. It's 888-SAY-ESPN. Let's get to some of these calls because I know a lot of people want to talk about uh, a few things. So let's do that. Let's go to Claudia and Callie. You're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Hello, Claudia. How are you? Hi, Stephen A. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Well, thank you so Hi. much. How are you doing? Good. And yourself? I'm doing great. Go ahead. Talk to me. Uh, I I just want you to not underestimate my Pac-12 Bruins because what Bruin took out Aaron Rodgers this season, Anthony Barr. Oh, what Bruin's going to take out Ben Ben from the playoffs was Miles Jack, mm-hmm. the Jaguars, and he's okay. going to take out him and Calias Campbell. Will well, listen, take Anthony, out. Anthony Barr and Miles Jack are no joke. I like them both, but go ahead. What point did you really call up here to make? Because the Patriots are not going to the Super Bowl. It's going to be the Eagles and the Jaguars. The Eagles and the Jaguars. So you're telling me it's going to be Blake Bortles against Nick Foles? Yep. That's what it's going to be. And the Eagles are going to win. And if they do, Stephen, this year I turn 50, you will take me out to dinner for my 50th birthday. If if what? If what? If if, if, if the Eagles and and the the, the Jaguars win? The Eagles win and the Eagles and Jaguars Make it to the Super Bowl. I, I have to. I have to think about it. I have to think about it, Claudia. I can't believe that I'm saying this over national radio, but I'll have to check in with someone before I'm allowed to grant you that wish. But I do appreciate the call and the offer. Thank you so much. You have well, a wonderful you're day. Welcome. Thank yeah, you. I I appreciate it. You take care of yourself. Let me move on from that subject. It's a little bit hot up in here. Let's go to Ryan in Atlanta. You're live with Stephen A. <laughs> What's up, Ryan? Stephen A. Man, thanks for taking my call. No problem. What's up? Hey, man, I, I, I got to say, uh, I don't know what kind of trickery the NFL could pull, but I agree with you, bro. If uh, if if Nick Foles and, and and Case Keenum are in the Super Bowl, it's, it's no, going to be ugly, No, 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 no. It can't be both. It'll be one or the other against against Blake Bortles. That's the only scenario that can happen because that Tom Brady ain't there. Yeah, go ahead. Right, no, but but yeah, it's, exactly. Um, or or Blake Bortles, either either one of. Boy, if you're right, you got to have two. Uh, that's gonna be ugly, man. If Tom Brady doesn't get in there, so I don't know what the NFL gonna do. I I, I think all this scandal with his hand has something to do with it, but uh, I I don't know, man. It's gonna be ugly, bro. In the NFL, have, with all the problems they've had this year, you know, it, it's just going downhill. Looks like I have never seen the NFL in a more vulnerable position than they are right now. I mean. After the flake gate threatened the mall last year before Brady came back from his four game suspension, ran roughshod through the league, got to the Super Bowl and won it, overcoming a 28 to three deficit against the Atlanta Falcons. The guy comes back this year is playing and having an MVP caliber season. And now he's holding the NFL in the palm of his hands. Cause I'm telling you right now, if Tom Brady's not in the Super Bowl, since Big Ben and Drew Brees and Matt Ryan all got knocked out, especially Brees and Big Ben, if Tom Brady ain't in the Super Bowl in two weeks 
And in and, and 16 days, I got to tell y'all, NFL is going to be in a bad spot. I'm telling you right now, the ratings ain't going to be the same. I don't care what anybody says. I just don't care. I appreciate the call, Ryan. Thank you so much. Colton, in Tampa, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, man. I have a dream, Stephen A. And it's a, <laughs> it's a Super Bowl without Tom Brady in it. Uh, oh, but, my goodness. But, but it's probably going to turn into my nightmare when he gets in there. But I, I look at I'm feeling a little better. I did my research on Tony Sterator, the back judge, who I okay. predicted is going to throw at least three flags on Jacksonville Jaguars defense. You know, yep. of course, no flags were thrown on them for uh, either defensive holding or pass interference last week against the Steelers, even though they mug them. But – I, I got to say, I'm feeling good. He did the Carolina game uh, earlier this year against the Patriots, where Carolina beat the Patriots. There was only one flag thrown in that entire game against Carolina. He threw it, a, a, a defensive pass interference on Gronkowski, but they'd actually thrown an offensive pass interference call on Gronkowski the play before. And, and that, was only, that was the only penalty on Carolina in that game. Sterato also did the the uh, Denver Broncos Patriots AFC Championship game two years ago, and I remember Gronk complaining about how he'd been mugged and no flags were coming out. So, so I'm feeling a little bit better here, Stephen A. I, you I, know, I, 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 well, listen, you're feeling a little bit better because you're rooting against the Patriots, and I hear you. But the flip side to it is that this is the AFC Championship game, and like I told you, listen, the NFL can't afford to not have Brady in the Super Bowl. Not this one, Carlton. Not this Super Bowl. You can't have Blake Bortles. You can't have Blake Bortles against Nick Foles or Case Keenum and tell everybody to look forward to a Super Bowl. You just can't they, do it. If they don't throw flags, Jacksonville's got a chance. And, and what it is is it's the second best defense in terms of takeaways. Jacksonville had 33 takeaways this year against the second best in terms of giving them up. The Patriots only had 12 giveaways this year, second best in the NFL. So we'll see who wins there. But I also think it's going to be who can run the ball. You know, Jacksonville, as good as their defense is, they're ranked 26th against the rush by Bill Belichick's favorite metric, which is yards per rush attempt against that defense. Well, you saw me. You you heard me bring up Deion Lewis, and now he'll need to run the ball effectively in order to neutralize Jacksonville's defense. It can't be a situation where Tom Brady's just dropping back the pass because New England has no running game whatsoever. They'll need a running game in this game so Jacksonville can't drop seven in the coverage. That was what I proclaimed uh, in the last segment of the show. You're, you're right. Jacksonville has the second-best pass defense by Bill Belichick's favorite metric. So the Patriots are going to try to run the ball against Jacksonville and also get the backs involved on the swing passes. You know, White and Lewis, they're going to try to throw to those back mm-hmm. short, short passes that are effectively runs. And so we'll see whether or not Jacksonville can run on the Patriots. They should be able to because the Patriots' rush defense is wretched. 31st in the NFL by yards per And Leonard rush. Fournette, and Leonard Fournette, in case y'all don't know, is a stud. And you know that's what the Patriots are going to try to do, stop that run, because they don't have any confidence that Blake Bortles can pass their way into the, into the Super Bowl. So it's going to be rushing, rushing attack versus rushing attack. And turnover and the turnover battle. I will and, say this to you: I think Tom Brady's going to throw the ball at least 40, 45 times. I think I he's going to throw it. the ball. Unless they're I, all of the back. I think he's going to throw the ball forty to forty-five times, trying to dip and dunk. But that speed that 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 Jacksonville has on its defensive side of the ball, I think you're going to see a lot of misdirection. This is where Tom Com, Tom Tom Coughlin is going to come. He's going to have to come from upstairs and help out his coach in this particular situation, Maroney. That's what I think. I'll tell you, if Sterator throws more than one flag, though, on the Jacksonville uh, secondary, I'm going to be apoplectic on Monday when I call you. Well, you, you know? sound apoplectic Cause, now. Because <laughs> my dream, my dream is Blake Bortles versus Nick Foles. No, That's no, my dream, Stephen no. A. Please you know make what, it happen. But you're lying. You're lying, Carlton, because you know good and damn well if that happens, you'll barely watch the Super Bowl. You know no, it. I will, I will enjoy it for Oh, once. my Lord. Will, last year's Super Bowl was so Traumatic for me, Stephen. I, I'm barely over it now. Let, let's, that let's, was let's, traumatic. That's it, right. Be, before that, the, the Seahawks Super Bowl was traumatic for me, Stephen. That's, a. that's right. <laughs> you're gonna suffer. You're gonna you're gonna miss the Patriots when they're gone. I'm telling you, if they don't make this Super Bowl, you're gonna regret your words. You're gonna be depressed. You mark it down. You mark it down. I can. I can 
sigh of, sigh of relief. The sun oh, will be out and tamper and I'll be feeling good. No, you're, you're delusional, Stephen A. You're delusional. You're delusional, Carlton, on this one. You're delusional. You're not appreciating the greatness of the Patriots, but you will, my. 